Hello and welcome. In this episode, we will review a new feature in Dynamics 365 version 10.0.27, which is called payroll integration. If we look at Microsoft Docs page for this feature, we'll see that it consists of two parts. The first one is all about making an employee or marking that employee as ready to get paid. And the second one is the API to a third party payroll application. The API is built on top of the virtual tables in Dataverse and using these data models right here. If we look at overall flow for this integration, we are talking about an HR person in, inside D365 creating a new worker and marking that worker as ready to be paid. Then the information is being sent to a third party payroll system where the payroll is processed, pay slips are generated, and then via API, an employee inside D365 can review these slips. And of course, if any payroll or compensation information has been updated by HR person inside D365, that information would flow via API to a third party payroll system where the changes can be processed. With that being said, guys, what I want to do in this video is to review a new functionality that will either make an employee ready to be paid or not. What I've done here, guys, is I made sure that I went to my feature management workspace and enabled that payroll integration feature. Once that is done, we will navigate to HR resources and go to setup HR shared parameters. In here, we'll need to navigate to payroll integration tab and make sure that the use payroll address purposes is set to yes. That would allow us to define payroll related addresses on a new worker. With that in place, I will navigate to a workspace called compensation management. And in here, you will see two tiles on the right hand side. Employees that are ready to pay this employee details can be shared with a third party payroll system. And then we see employees that are not ready to pay. So there are certain things that are missing on that employee file. If we click on that tile, we'll see there are three employees that fall in that category. What I'll do for the purposes of this demo, I will create a brand new worker and then we'll make sure that she's configured to get paid. So I'll click on new. I will enter personal number, Mary, last name, say snow. Employment start date will be this Monday and just click on hire. So now we see that employee showing up in that list. And if we go back to our workspace, refresh that, we see that the number of employees that are not configured, that are not ready to get paid is four. So let's click on that tile again, open Mary Snow file. And what we can do here is to run a validation to see which fields are missing before she can be considered ready. We'll click on payroll tab here on the top and click on validate. We get a message saying that Mary Snow is not ready to get paid. We can also click on message details to see all the fields that are missing, or we can click on the results button right here, and that will give us a list. So what we see here is certain things are success. For example, employment has been defined. Uh, we have a uh, personal ID defined. First and last name also has been set. But now we see certain addresses that are missing. So we see payroll residency address is missing, as well as the payroll work address is missing. With that in place, let's just go back and add that address to that worker. I will open her file, click on addresses, click on add, enter address. And what's important here is to select the correct purpose. Click on the purpose drop down and make sure to select payroll work location and payroll residency location. Click on select. So we have added two purposes on top of the home purpose to that address. And let's click on OK. With that in place, let's rerun the validation. We still get this error, but let's look at the results. And we see that both payroll residency as well as payroll work addresses are now successful. Now we see birth date and position missing. Scroll down to the section here, click on edit, type in her birthday. And another one was the missing position. So click on the position tab right here. Click Add Assignment, Sales Associate in the USA West region, and just click on Create Positional Assignment. Now let's run validation once more. And now we see the only piece that is missing is the compensation information. So that's the last required configuration that needs to happen before Mary can be uh, ready to pay. Go back here. In order for us to do that, click on Compensation tab here. Let's assign her a fixed compensation plan. Click on new, action higher, select that position, click on the plan. We have one 
fixed compensation plan here because she's store associate in the West region. Select the step. Let's say she just started, so she's gonna get the first step. The pay will be 1915 per hour. Click OK, go back and now run the validation again. Payroll, validate. We see that Marin Snow is ready to pay. Now we can go back to our workspace and we see that employees ready to pay number has increased by one. And now we see her there. So that will then enable Mary details to be shared with the third party payroll system for her to be included on the next payroll run. What we have done here can also be automated. There is also a new feature that is called process automation that now we can enable the automation of that validation process. So process automation under sysadmin setup. In here, we just have one automation. Let's click on create new process automation. And under scheduled type, we now can see, among other things, is ready to pay schedule type registration. We're gonna select the company USMF, create series. And from this point on, we just need to specify intervals with which that validation will execute, schedule time, and click on finish. Now we will have this process automation recurring periodically to make sure that we validate any new employees as either ready or not ready to pay. With that being said, guys, that is all I wanted to show you to you today. I think integration to a payroll system from D365 is a much needed feature. Any implementation that I've been part of did require that. Now with virtual tables, APIs, and status of a worker as ready or not ready to pay, we can enable that integration much easier and we can build on top of the existing virtual tables to come up with a solution in the quickest possible time. That is all, until the next time, take care.